based upon current statistics, if 100 of us were diagnosed with lung cancer today, only 15 of us would live. I know this because I am a lung cancer survivor. I am nine years cancer-free this month. And the kicker is, I never smoked a day in my life. It is now my mission to increase lung cancer awareness to save lungs and lives, to give hope to all people diagnosed with cancer. In 2008, I received a phone call that changed the course of my life. For 35 years, I worked as a flight attendant for Northwest Airlines. I was preparing to depart for Amsterdam when my flight physician returned, requested that I return to Mayo Clinic immediately in Rochester, Minnesota, because of the results of a recent CT scan. Just days before, I was cross-country skiing here in Big Sky, from our home up to the resort. I was racing my husband and this other guy we call the animal. Two years earlier, while greeting passengers boarding my flight in Japan, I started to choke so uncontrollably, I honestly thought I was going to die. Due to my international flight schedule, I thought I might have contracted SARS or TB. My physicians in Montana found nothing. The choking cough, the back, the shoulder pain persisted. As a matter of fact, we bought three new mattresses. My husband bought stock in a mattress company. <laughs> Following that phone call from my Mayo Clinic flight physician, I found myself in the pulmonary department, and time froze as I looked at the wall, plastered with my CT scans. And the doctor said, you have lung cancer. I snapped at him, doctor, you have the wrong person. I never smoked. I rushed to the medical library, only to discover information about never smokers and lung cancer was very, very minimal. I soon learned that if you have lungs, you can get lung cancer. My surgeon asked, when can we schedule your lung surgery? I said, how about in three months? I have a season ski pass. <laughs> My husband intervened, she's in shock. When can you operate? 48 hours later, I was breathing with the help of a heart and lung machine, while a team of Mayo surgeons removed a three centimeter tumor and most of my left lung. Having your lung removed is like suffocating. Following the surgery, my husband stood by my bedside for five hours and said, breathe, breathe, breathe. In the hospital rehab center, I was pedaling a bicycle. The physical therapist said, now let's begin nicotine rehab. Barely able to speak, I said, nicotine rehab? The therapist said, do you want your medical bills paid? I said, this is crazy. You know I never smoked, and I know smoking is deadly. As much as I resented this insurance requirement, I learned that nicotine is the most addictive substance on the planet, and lung cancer is the number one cancer killer in both the U.S. and worldwide. Nine years ago today, oncology sent me home with a paced breathing app and a stress-free living workbook that taught me how to become mindful of how to breathe, because with one lung living at 6,500 feet, it hurt to move. I couldn't even bend over. But by diligently following the prescribed paced breathing guidance from my breath app, I was able to accept my cancer diagnosis, tell my body to resist cancer, and live a great quality of life. One day, my husband put my cross-country ski boots on my feet and said, you belong outside, let's go. It took me one hour to barely move 200 feet on a familiar cross-country trail. But every day we went outside and cross-country skied, even though it hurt to breathe, because just sitting made the pain worse. I was never a runner prior to lung cancer. I hated running. 
three years after surgery to prove there is quality of life after cancer, I decided to test my endurance by running my first race for a little girl with cancer. Another woman came up to me and asked me, how long have you been running? I said, I've been running 15 minutes. <laughs> She said, really? You sound scary and you breathe really weird. So I passed her and I finished second in my age group. In 2013, I was selling my five, celebrating my five-year anniversary by running a 5K race in every state. I received a letter from my life insurance company saying they'd cash my check. I called them because I had not yet received my life insurance policy. When I spoke with the actuaries, they said, your life insurance has been canceled. According to statistics, you should be dead. This really made me very, very mad. So I set a new goal, this time to run a 10K race in every continent. By August this past year, I had completed three of seven continents. Then I received another phone call from Mayo Clinic. This time, it was Dr. Bruce Johnson from the Human Physiology Research Lab. He was inviting my husband and I to participate in the Kili Heart Climb on Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. This was an aging and altitude research study led by none other than Montana's own world-famous mountaineer, Conrad Anker. My husband suffers from altitude sickness, and they really wanted him for this research climb. But he decided being a high-altitude guinea pig just was not for him. I jumped at the chance. I considered it a challenge, and I flew to Kilimanjaro. As one of 30 guinea pigs in the Kili Heart climb, I, subject, I subjected myself to sleeping downhill in a tent every night while climbing up to the summit of 19,341 feet during the day. En route, I needed to acclimate to adapt so I could meet my body's demands for oxygen as I climbed heel-toe, heel-toe to the summit of Kilimanjaro. No longer a young babe, <laughs> and with the changes that this body has undergone due to natural aging, I was being monitored with five different mon monitors and devices to help the hardworking researchers compare my body to the younger people in the group. My tent mate was 23, and I was the eldest of all 160 participants. My unique situation of having just one lung and one lung removed, it gave me another potential limitation. But living and playing here in Big Sky, along with my sheer determination and my pace breathing, got me to the top of the fourth tallest peak in the world. I might add, without any high altitude sickness or supplemental oxygen. It also allowed me to be an example to everyone who challenged me by saying, we really wish your husband was here. I guess we have to watch you. I had the feeling that many on the climb doubted that it could actually summit. I will tell you this, it was the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life the second being learning to breathe after lung cancer. On the way down, I saw a sign that read 10K, and you're out of Kilimanjaro Park. I took off running and passing everyone saying, this is my African 10K. You want a race? <laughs> Guess who won? <laughs> One more continent done. <laughs> Now, data actually shows that cigarette smoking is on the decline but lung cancer is increasing. The chances of dying after lung cancer diagnosis is 85%, a statistic that really hasn't changed since the 1970s. Lung cancer deaths will hit one billion people in this century. And as I found 
the research is sorely lacking. How many of you know that lung cancer takes more lives than colon, breast, and prostate cancers combined each year? I ran a race with a 36-year-old mother who survived lung cancer. And together, we ran a 5K race for a 20-year-old Emory University student and soccer coach who was diagnosed with a tumor the size of a baseball in her thoracic. Sadly, she died two days before her 21st birthday. Today, in Tanzania, there's a three-year-old little girl who has lung cancer. None of us ever smoked. Doctors all suspected we had asthma, not lung cancer. Lung cancer diagnosis really makes you learn all about your lungs. I'm sure we all know we should never smoke. But my burning question for researchers is, what other factors are causing this devastating loss of lungs and lives? Could it be diet, hormones, our lifestyle? And how can we grab the attention to make life-saving changes? Could it be by creating lung awareness with some lung fun facts? Lungs are one of the largest organs in your body. They look like broccoli, but they shouldn't be green. Stretched out, the lungs have the surface area of a tennis court. We lose one half liter of water every day just to breathing. On Mount Kilimanjaro, I drank four liters of water a day. We breathe 15,000 to 20,000 times per day, breathing in 2,100 to 2,400 gallons of air each day. And you can live with one lung. You can run and you can climb with one lung. Unfortunately, every two and a half minutes, another person is diagnosed with lung cancer. 20% never smoked. 40% are non-smokers. It is now my life quest to spread awareness and talk openly about lung cancer in order to save lungs and lives. Because if lung cancer is caught before it spreads, the likelihood of survival triples. My husband and I founded Wortman Lung Cancer Foundation, a nonprofit focused on sponsoring running lungs races to raise awareness and support lung research to save lives. We approached Dr. Bruce Johnson at the Mayo Clinic Human Physiology Laboratory to develop a longitudinal lungs healthy study that will create better understanding about the relationships between lifestyle, environment, genetics, and lung health, with an emphasis on nutrition and fitness. The Healthy Lungs Project will use devices we wore during the Kilimanjaro climb. Some were provided by Philips. It will also integrate a growing number of new and developing technologies, including my breath app, The purpose of this study is to engage communities and participants like you of all ages and backgrounds and locations to enhance education about lung health, lung cancer, and pulmonary research while investigating the influence about the changes of lung function as we age. And we would like to do this in a fun and educational way. I would like to invite everyone to participate in the Healthy Lungs Research Project. You can do this virtually, or you can do it in person at a running lung walk, run, or climb. The study is also designated to have easier collaboration and sharing of information worldwide with investigators at Mayo Clinic who focus more specifically on lung health and lung cancer risk. Think about it. The life and lungs you save could be your own. Together, let's blow cancer away. Thank you.